Hello guys and welcome back. So let's go ahead and make our controller follow the skin. Okay. Um, so there's a little trick here. Uh, when you drag the controller up and down, right, it's controlling the skin. So that's one input. And we have the sliders to do the same thing. Okay. But the slider, when the slider moves it, the controller does not move it. So we need to fake it to make the controller kind of like looks like it's moving with it. Okay, so the idea here is that we make a follicle here right beneath the controller, maybe over there, and we make the controller follow that follicle. Okay, uh, but when the controller moves itself, we want the controller to actually also follow the follicle, but not following itself. Okay, uh, so you'll see what that is. All right, so first thing we want to do is actually uh, just to show you one example here, we can maybe create a control for this sphere to make it follow the skin underneath. All right, to achieve that, I need to create a follicle over there. So let me go to face mode and grab that face. Let me actually turn off symmetry this time. Okay, and then go to the FX and then in here, we can go ahead and create hair. Uh, let me use the default setting here and then I'm gonna change the setting to add selected surface. Okay, and then I can go apply. Now what happens is that a joint will get, uh, sorry, a hair system will get created here. And you can see a bunch of things uh, getting created over there. I don't really need all these uh, nuclears or PFX hair or hair system, but I need the follicle. So let me open that and then also open the follicle. There is a curved folder underneath it. I don't need that either. Let me grab the follicle, unparent it, and I don't even need that group. Uh, this is just the one follicle over here you can see which will be in the center of that face i was selecting earlier uh, you can control where this follicle is by changing the parameters on the u and v direction you can see it does slide through the surface uh, th the way it locates itself is using the uv so that means you should have a very good uv to do that uh, in the uv editor you can see my uv uh, here uh, this was actually a full body model, so the other parts are having like uh, hands and everything. Uh, but you know, we have the face over here. <laughs> okay, anyway, so um, the UV is based on the UV of the UV coordinate. Uh, so here, uh, the UV value is 0 0.3, 0 0.16, right? If you think about that, it's going to be somewhere like 0 0.3, right? So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's actually divided by eight. But point three should be somewhere here at a quarter, and point one goes up, and that's around where that is. So that's why you're seeing the. It's gonna be over here where the eyebrow is, right? Uh, if you wanted to find a specific location, you could, but that's a little bit, you know, needs some coding. So what you do is you go to the UV mode, you grab that UV. This one, right? You can move it over there just to take a look at, you know, that UV coordinate. So move it there and you can use a uh, some code in mail. You can say um, poly edit UV. Okay, and then you can say query and you query the U and V. Right, and the run it, you can see the UV coordinate, right? Now after that, you can control Z to go back because you don't want it to move that. Just need to query where that is. And you got those values and you copy those values. Uh, yeah, copy those values and paste those to the uh, UV coordinate of the follicle. Uh, that way you can basically specify exactly where that follicle is. Okay, now you can see the follicle is over there now, right? Cool. So um, after that, the follicle will follow the skin, right? So whichever you do, whatever you do with the geometry, and you go to the object mode, right? To do with the controller, you can see the follicle will follow that. Okay, so the first step is again, we set up a follicle to be exactly underneath the controller. Doesn't have to be exactly, but roughly there. 
All right, cool. Now afterwards, we want the follicle to control or to move the controller instead of the controller move itself. So here, what we do here is control G to group the controller twice. Okay, and you name this group. Um, uh, I'm gonna call this guy compensate. Compensate. Okay, and the other group follow. Right, and then in the node editor, I'm gonna do some trick. Uh, make it smaller here. Okay, even smaller. All right. So what I wanna do here is to add those things in. Actually, just the compensation and the follow and the controller. Right, add those two things in. So what you wanna do is make the controller not controlling itself by using a compensate group uh, to compensate the movement. What I need to do is create to create a multiply divide. Okay, and I multiply the translation by negative one. Okay. You can see we're, we're, we're multiplying by negative one and that result goes to the translate. Now this is going to be a very interesting setup. So now if I drag my controller and try to move it, you can see the controller no longer moves. Now it's not because it's not moving, but if you grab the group and take a look at the local rotation axis, you can see when you drag the controller up, its parent, this guy, goes down. So basically the, the parent is moving it back, right? So it's, it's all fake here. The controller does move itself, you can see the value here, but we're just visually moving it back. And that's why we use connection. When you use connection, right, the, only the numbers are getting transferred. Uh, and that means uh, even the controller itself is actually moved up, um, but it's okay because the value is uh, over there, right? Anyway, um, that means even the controller is not moving up, right? The value is there and that's gonna transfer over to the joints. Okay, so um, when that is done, then we need to use the follicle to actually move the controller. And that's when we just grab the follicle. And then the follow group we created earlier, we do a rigging constraint, and we can do a point constraint, make sure that you have maintain offset. All right, cool. Now when we move the controller, the controller moves up, but it's not actually moving it up by its own value here, it's moved up by a point constraint uh, above its parent group, right here. So the follow will follow the follicle. That's when, that's how this controller will appears to be moving. But the controller itself, when you move it, its direct parent will actually move it back. And then the parent of the compensate group, this one will also move it up. So the actual move is done here. And this one takes care of the movement of the controller itself to move it back. Okay, so there's some uh, trick here. Now, why do we need to do all this? Because now if you go ahead and use your global controller, you can see now that controller we set it up actually follows the skin because we're using the skin, right? To drive that follicle and that follicle then moves the controller. So that way there's a uh, consistency here, right? So it's like they're all banded together. All right, cool. So that's a lot of work. Okay, so in reality, we don't have to do this uh, manually if we set up some coding, and that's actually what I have in my controller tool set. Uh, so if you go to the controller tools here and run this, let me dock the UI here. Okay, uh, all you have to do is grab your controllers that you want them to follow. So this is gonna be these guys. Let's ignore that one because that one is already set up properly already. So, so grab all these and then the skin and you go to the make follow skin and just click. Okay, now you can see a whole bunch of new locator uh, follicles are created. They're done exactly the same way. You can see they're all here. And now if you go grab your controllers and then move them, you can see all the spheres are following. So that way the entire control system will feel uh, much more consistent, right? So now we can use those global controls to control like the eyebrow up and down, right? And then we can use those smaller guys to fine tune the shape of the eyebrow afterwards. And it looks like they're working together seamlessly. All right, cool. So that's gonna be another thing we can do with this setup. All right, see you next time.